looked like it could have come from an area around Cape Canaveral. Um, the family has, uh, has verified that tackle box uh, with a pretty high degree of accuracy came from that boat. Uh, given that information, that allows us, that's a, that's, a, that's a large data point that allowed us then to refocus our some of our area. So instead of looking at the Gulf Stream and further north, which is, it becomes problematic, that's getting up into North Carolina now. We've been able to take some of those assets we would have sent to other areas and focus them right on where we know we have an item that we found. So right now we are heavily located in that area. We have three aircraft searching the drift pattern around that where that box is recovered. I have three cutters out there right now. And then, uh, as Chief mentioned earlier, we have a multitude of boats out in the near shore area that are also looking for additional clues uh, that might help us find the boat um, or Brian and Justin. We're hearing that a styrofoam uh, cooler lid was found. Can you confirm that? So we found a number of di different kinds of debris out there. Uh, one of them was a styrofoam cooler lid. Unfortunately, that's a very generic item. So while we're trying to run that down to see if something like that could have been on board, um, it was in the same geographic vicinity as the bag, so it, it, it could possibly be correlating, but with the bag itself, our, our efforts really on top of the bag because we have a much higher degree of certainty with that. Um, we found other pieces of trash out there that we just can't distinguish, um, pieces of plastic and things like that. Uh, the lid is something that we have worked into our search grid, um, taking, you know, and again, whether we know it or not, it's just an area that allows us to, to put some assets on to see if we can find something else, but I, I can't confirm that at this point. There's been a lot of optimism about the training that these two had. What would that training tell them to do in this situation? What are you looking for considering the training that they've had? I'm not familiar with the particular training that, that either individual had, but I do know that I'm looking for two relatively young, healthy, trained firefighters, one of whom's a Navy veteran. That obviously gives us hope, um, you know, that, that, that if, you know, given something bad happening, it would give them a chance at survival. Um, you know, we have to counter that against, you know, with anyone, how long have they been in the water and what are we finding? And the reality is we're still limited to one tool bag at the moment. Um, and we remain we remain optimistic, but but guardedly so, um, you know. But we'll uh, we'll like I said for today, um, we're we're 100 percent in, and we're continuing to look for Justin and Brian. So is there a, a, a rescue operation? At this point, it is absolutely 100 percent a rescue operation. With your concentration around the tackle box and that grid in that area, still how far north are you, and how far south are you spread out? As of the moment, we have aircraft that are about as far north as Savannah and about as far south as St. Augustine was a drift we were running this morning. So it's still a pretty good size swath, um, and, but we're, you know, so the focus with the cutters is really in that geographic region, just a little bit north of Jacksonville, which takes into account the bag and then drifting it overnight. Are you able to scan the bottom for any sort of wreckage or anything like that? Not at the not at the moment, no. That's I didn't know if the P3 is good or whoever. No, at, at this point, at, at the rescue, we're really looking on the surface, and all of our efforts right now is still is still on the surface, and while while we're still looking actively for the boat. You mentioned a cell phone ping near some fishing grounds. Where exactly was that? Almost directly off Cape Canaveral, in a, in a very. Uh, in a very common fishing area that they believe they were in. There's a number of uh, shallow fishing areas uh, where people con uh, typically bottom fish. And we know from talking to the family and some of the friends that that's an area that he could likely have been in. And that's been one of the many areas that we looked at right from the get-go is that they would be in that area that, that is a pretty common fishing ground. Do you have a message for the community or anything that you need from volunteers or the community as in regards to the search? I can't thank the community enough. Uh, the outpouring of support to, uh, to Chief Powers and his crew um, and to us in the Coast Guard. Um, you can never say enough about the support the community gives us, whether it's just a thank you or something online. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we see tips and things too. Some of the fishermen were writing in about other fishing spots that maybe we hadn't thought of. And you can rest assured that if we see something we haven't thought of, we will take a screenshot of that and we'll add that in and take a look. Uh, is that something new? Is that something that we could, that we could take further? Um, so we, we absolutely appreciate all of the assistance, the help, and, uh, and the outpouring of support from the community. And I, I can't say enough about the North Florida, South Georgia, all the way down to Cape Canaveral. It's been an absolutely wonderful 
incredible outpouring, and it, uh, it makes you proud to serve this community. Just a real quick clarification, does the search officially start on Friday night or on Saturday? We were searching Friday night, so the minute the call came in, we began a Coast Guard search uh, based on the information we had at that time, and then the search continued to ramp up throughout Saturday, throughout the weekend, and we've maintained the same steady uh, level of search uh, from then until now. Uh, I can't speak to any specific training right now. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank